First and foremost, you need to get Spark AR Studio, which is the software that is responsible for creating these effects. Um, and I'm assuming you guys do have it. Um, you can play around as I can do scripting to importing 3D models. Um, I'm not quite sure you can I get to see what some of the creators have been doing. Um, and it, I mean, it's all up to your imagination, uh, basically, on that one. So, um, so if you guys go to download over here, you get to download it um, over here, and then yeah. Man, as it, after, it's, after it's downloaded, you can install it. The second thing I would like you guys to have, or I assume you guys have, is Blender. Uh, Blender is an open source 3D software. Um, and um, I didn't know anything about 3D actually when I started it. Um, when I started doing Spark AR, and there's this one particular tutorial which I'll share um, on the chats, which kind of taught me uh, more on creating 3D. Uh, models uh, that are suitable for my effects. Um, I, it's actually a long tutorial about making a donut, uh, but we'll get into. Uh, you guys will get into that once I've sent the link. Um, you also gonna need Spark AR Hub. This is where you're able to publish your effect. Um, it also gives you insights on how many people have, um, how many people have seen it, to opening it, to capturing it, to sharing it into their stories so uh, I have a lot of filters over here so some I haven't even published yet so that's it's like coming soon <laughs> so yeah so the effect we're going to be doing right now it's going to be like a shiny plastic reflection type of mask um, we're going to do that and then I'm also going to show you um, one of my favorite patches um, class uh, it's about uh, it's a patch where you're able to um mimic class or it's a glass shader let me rather let me just say that um so anyway so we open spark ar studio and as you see on this landing page it's all the featured um templates so you have your blank project over here and all the featured templates um, they're quite popular right now um and then underneath you get to see all the other um all the other templates. Um, I mean, this, these templates help a lot, especially if you wanna maybe you're looking for something in particular. You can just add um, add something and then remove um, the original um, original assets from that template. You're welcome to do that. Um, what uh, one I always go to is the neck decoration um, because there is the neck is rigged. There's a there's a occluder. Of the neck that's rigged so if you move sideways it moves with you instead of it being static which is quite nice but um, I highly recommend you guys touch and go around these templates just kind of see how each of them are made um, and then on the second tab over here this is the uh, learn tab where you are able to um, get more insight on some of the tutorials um, from all levels from beginner intermediate and advanced so highly recommend you guys do that as well um, okay let's get right into it so we're gonna start a completely blank project and I'll be explaining um, all of these to you guys in a moment should I have some background music should I Ooh. maybe I should Okay, so this is open. Um, this is the first. Uh, you guys are going to get quite familiar with this. So this is your project window um, as it's opened. Um, so over here you get your viewpoint panel with your cell phone viewpoint where you're able to change from different mobile devices because of size. You guys can see it's on iPhone 8, but if I go to iPad Pro, you see the size of our iPad Pro. So it's it's quite important, at least for a lot of body segmentation um, effects, um, you are able to do, um, just to kind of check if it works on different devices. Um, it's better to actually test it on the actual device, not there. Um, but if you don't have, you can just send it towards like a friend who has a different device, um, which I normally do. Um, so, and then over here you have your action bar. I call it the action bar because I get confused all the time 
and what exactly I should call it. So you get your workspace where you're able to open your patch editor, which is the it's equivalent to scripting. That's a way easier version of scripting. Um, you will see us use it on this tutorial. Um, and then you get your console. That's where the actual scripting goes, but you have to add a scripting software. Um, um, highly recommend Visual Studio Code. Uh, that's a really good... Um, if you guys really want to take it to the next level, you will need to know scripting. So the console over here will tell you whether the effect is gone through or there's problems between um, this value or that value. Okay, so... And then the asset summary. Asset summary compiles all your... All the assets you've bought, the material, the textures um, that you've bought in, and calculates it to see if it fits the if it's within the 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 size limit of the effect. The maximum is forty megabytes, but thirty megabytes helps. It works better on both ISO and Android. Thirty meg forty megabytes only works for I ISO in most cases. Um, so this will kind of just tell you how much this particular texture um, is taking this amount of space and so forth. So, yeah, I, I normally open this up when um, I can't import or export my effect or upload my effect on, on, on Spark AR. Okay, so then you get your video. Um, this is where it's, sort of like, it's like a simulation. So you get different types of models for different types of with different types of faces and skin tones which is very important so you kind of see if you have a light effect you need to see how it works on lighter skin if you have a dark effect you need to see how it looks on darker skin just so that i mean everyone's different um that's how the world works as so, um spark is accommodating that as well this one in particular um this is a plain one and this what it does, it's, um, it's more about world effects. So you can see it's, it's actually on the back camera, but if I move up and down, see, um, this, is, this is how I move the camera on my back camera. So um, by tapping on the screen, whereas when it's on selfie mode using this, this guy, you can't really move, you know, you can't really um, move the camera around or away from the face. Um, I've added, um, if you guys want to add your own custom videos, you're welcome to do it here, but it needs to be a W, a web, a web M format for, for uploading. So I've added these custom ones as well that I found, um, that you guys can play around with. So, um, feel free to do, um, to download or check it out on the Google docs. Um, there's way more other stuff that I would like to share with you guys. And I hope, I really hope at the end of this, um, you guys are able to create your own face filters. Um, just don't forget to tag Fagugesi. Uh, shout out to them. Um, this, um, this all happened because of them. So um, please, please share and tag. <laughs> um, so then let's go back to our, um, oh, the camera. Okay, interesting. Okay, the camera is, uh, starts up your webcam. Uh, and this is... Okay, it's not really working now. Sorry, guys. Um, yeah, maybe we'll pick... Yeah, I'll pick this guy. There's no OG. Um, so then you get your pause. So you can pause your video. You can pause your video just to do some readjustments. You can stop to start over. If I stop... It starts over, or you can restart, so it restarts and plays. See, uh, the search bar really just means maybe searching some other assets that you can find on the asset panel, um, which I'm going to talk to you guys about just now. Um, so um, on the scene panel over here, this is what you guys are going to, so the scene panel represents what you guys see in this viewpoint. Okay, so... You get your device, which is the iPhone 8. Um, it gives you the dimensions, the size and the scale, the camera as well. And then the ambient light is not really important now. Um, it's, it's more important for very complicated or complex effects. Um, 
which I'll probably maybe have for you guys on the third installment. Um, but uh, the direction of light is going to be important for this particular face filter that we're going to be doing. Um, you can't you can't really change color now because we haven't added a mesh or anything for the light to bounce on. So directional light is quite cool for that. Um, and then I mean, as you guys can see, as I'm clicking on the scene panel, things are changing on this panel over here. This is the property panel. So property panel, you're able to change position or do some transformations like scaling, um, rotating, intensify, even visibility. Also layers as well. You can put layers on, but um, like I said, we'll touch on that um, a bit later on. I think also on the 2D, um, on the second installment, we'll be doing layers um, just to kind of see how we work with 2D animation um, and all that. So then you get your asset over here, asset panel. The asset panel is where you download, you put you put everything, everything that you wanted, everything that you gotten from Blender or something that you got online or a gift that you want to add, everything goes into this panel over here. So you can either have to import from computer, that's where you um, downloaded it and then it's in a particular folder, or you can go to the AR library, which has already some assets for you guys to use, like for example, shapes, um, if you guys want to use some shapes, you're more than welcome to do that. To even some sound clips, and then some patches and assets, and also some textures as well, which is quite um, cool. Um, the text environment environment textures are quite cool for um, what, uh, especially for what we're gonna do now. But um, I decided to go away from the whole plastic, I mean, um, environment texture because I I have my own patch. Um, which is a reflective glass patch, which it, we will be using for this particular um, for this particular exam um, workshop. So sorry. Um, okay. Anyway, so we're gonna start now um, creating our first effect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start. I'm gonna add the object. It gives me three scene understanding options. So you have face tracker, which means as soon as sees a face pick up the face and um, if there's any effects underneath the face tracker or any assets underneath the face tracker it will pop up so um, then you get a plane tracker which only works on a horizontal plane so whether it's on land or on a stool or on top of a table um, it's really 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 um, um, standard so uh, my AR galleries are on a plane tracker so maybe that's some uh, that's some little um, little insight for you guys on that. A fixed target tracker is more tracking like posters or maybe a particular artwork. Um, so um, there's one in particular that I saw where it was a stop sign, and they made it an, a two D animation after that. So you just take a photo of what whatever that you want to track, and then. You add it into this Indian Spark AR. You do your animations and you add your assets. And then every time someone has, you upload your effect, by the way. And every time someone hits a stop sign, um, that effect, it'll the fixed target tracker will will trigger the effect. Um, it's it's quite a, it's very it's a very cool one, especially for art people who do uh, for artworks, um, especially painters and illustrators. It becomes quite cool. Um, I've seen some great examples. Um, yeah, I've seen some great examples of some of them taking it to the next level with the fixed target tracker. The hand tracker, um, I haven't really touched on that uh, because it's still not available for Instagram. I'm still waiting to see um, on the updates. By the way, um, Spark updates every two weeks. So um, it's actually going to be reaching version, version 100 soon. So there's quite some hype on how how many more features they're going to add. So hopefully the hand tracker does come into play. Okay, so we're going to be using our face tracker uh, because we want a face filter. So we're going to add our face tracker. And as you can see here, the properties are already set for the tracked face. So you don't need to be scaling up and down or moving positions from side to side or rotating it. They're already set to the best of its ability. So... Um, and over here, if you wanna now wanna add a face mesh, so that's where we're gonna be doing the, the effect. So it's Control, left click, add, 
face mesh. So now there's a face mesh on it. It looks um, this is this is the face mesh face mesh on its basic form. So um, you can switch off the eyes, switch them back on on the property um, panels, switch off the mouth, switch it back on. And I'm gonna rename this reflective. Uh, there's also one thing I tend to do. I like naming my like naming my assets on my scenes so that I kind of remember how if I make a mistake what to go back to. But um, sometimes I don't. But I've I've paid major. I've I've paid a lot for you know having to to a point where I had to restart my my effects. You know, so I'm, this is something that I'm learning now uh, a lot to always name your Always name everything. Name everything. Reflective face. Okay, so we're gonna add a material. Now you can see now um, there is some definition, I guess, in in the face. And you see, there's only materials that are added into the asset panel. So as we go here at the asset panel, you have to see this on the property on the property panel. You have to see um, a whole lot of stuff that you might not understand. Um, but the easiest thing to do, I only concentrate on, when I started, I only concentrated on the shader type and then the shader properties. And then that was it, you know. Um, also, rendering options, so which are very important, especially for this tutorial. Um, okay, so the shader type, the shader type, we'll start here at the shader type. Shader type, there's a lot of shader types, um, which... Um, have different um, you know different properties on it so what, what we have right now is the standard one and which is uh, the standard one is quite cool it's more 3d based um, it's more 3d than anyone else uh, than any other shader type there but if I change the directional light that you guys can see that's what I meant when I um, when I spoke about the directional light needing an asset to shine light on so the light is quite strong um, yeah but it's a bit too dark yeah the light is quite strong um, but we are going to be changing that quite soon so I'm um, just I just I was just showing you guys how it works I'm just gonna go back to its standard color white and then flat flat shader is just flat there's no light bouncing. Um, it doesn't need any light bouncing up and down. Um, I can give you guys another example of changing the color. Nothing changes over here. So that is your that is your uh, flat shader. Um, and then physical shader. This is something that we are going to be using now. Is way more um, yeah, way more realistic. I guess in that sense, you know. So I'm going to change our names. Change the name to uh, plastic face. Plastic face. So we're gonna create a plastic face using um, that. So um, I always have a problem with um, how the edges of the face mesh are. It kind of looks really um, looks quite sharp. So normally, um, if you guys go in the Google Drive, I've, I've left some face reference assets. Um, that I highly recommend you guys check out. Um, so we're gonna add one there on the asset panel. Now you add it, you press asset, add asset, and import from computer. Um, and mine is already open here. Uh, maybe we should start again. Uh, desktop. Uh, okay, sorry, it's it's on my desktop, but it can be anywhere. Um, so face filter assets, assets, face assets and it's a texture so face texture it's called the face mesh mask it looks like this it's just this white glowy alpha image so it's meant to cut out the edges and make it more of a smoother um, smoother face mesh and I'll show you guys just now oh also every time you import um, every time you add any uh, textures please make sure that you click on no compression if you see the original size over here it's 40 kilobytes but then once it gets compressed by spark ar it's like on 512 kilobytes 600 or oh, 256 kilobytes 
so it doesn't really in terms of compressing it i feel like it doesn't compress it unzips so um, to avoid it being too heavy on your entire project file um, especially for textures we normally don't compress it so um, that's a nice tip um, that i would like for you guys to keep with you guys when you guys are creating more and more filters Okay, so in the shader property, since we've decided on the physical based shader type, on the shader property, I'd like to keep it white um, because I'm going to be playing around with the directional light. So keeping it at white for me uh, does um, does the job for me. So, And then texture here, you're able to choose a texture. And since I uploaded one texture here, which is in the face mesh mask, I can click on it and clear my options of the textures I have uploaded. Uh, since I uploaded one, I'm just going to click on this one. And you can see how smooth it is on the edges here. Um, so, yeah, this is like the, one of my uh, be best tips I've ever received for doing face meshes um, or face face effects. Yeah, it's because of um, uh, this. Yeah, that whole making um, the edges softer is quite uh, nice. Um, and what's nice also about the physical base type is that you can make this metallic. So I, I get that it's getting darker, but you can make it like very reflective and metallic. Um, and then I'll just show you guys what I mean if I move to plastic. And now render options, you're able to pick between add alpha. Alpha is at its purest, at 100%. No, no, um, it's not disturbed. It's 100%. Associative alpha is actually even worse. Yeah, so it's at 100%. As you can see. Uh, there is like some an edge, the edges are a bit weird now after I went to associative alpha. But this is, I don't really know the true definitions, um, but I just play around with it as much as I can. So I really um, suggest you guys do that. And as you can see here, this is more of a plastic look. Uh, let me just do this. Let me do this. You guys can kind of see what's happening here. So you had like options to kind of play around and make it plastic. Um, I'm gonna just gonna play with it. Yeah, this looks this looks way better now. Yeah, this guy looks really shiny. Okay, so now we're gonna play around with uh, the color, and that's where we're gonna go with our directional light. So if I change the color to blue, you to see it's like a uh, ultraviolet neon looking kind of face um, let me just change it to blue and then I'm going to control right click left click I'm going to duplicate it because I want more than one light and then um, blue so I want it maybe red uh, and then we'll change that into red the color might not look like it but uh, you guys will see it's more pinkish now so blue and red so in the viewpoint um, all these uh, all these three tabs that you guys see these are the transformation tabs so I can move it I can rotate it and rotate whatever I selected on the on the viewpoint panel and I can scale it uh, but you can't really scale um, directional light you can only move it so I'm gonna move the red one to the left and I'm gonna move the right one, the blue one, to the right. Um, okay. Still not looking the way I want it to look. Um, so now we're going to open the patch editor. What, I, what I'm looking for, I'm trying to rotate this, the blue light and the red light. Um, it's almost similar to the Fagugesi um, official face filter I just used a whole lot of layers and I used Photoshop for it so that I can um, but I did use the same principle of the lights rotating I think I used three lights so um, yeah, I'm just giving us this is like one of the bases um, I used the, the, this basis to uh, create the Fagugesi uh, face filter okay so we open up the patch editor and you can see the patch editor is a show map 
show map there's really nothing in it it just shows you where your patches will be in case you get lost there's some patches i've made where i could get lost i have to go up and instead of scrolling up i can just hit here go up and then i'm hide map and then i'm there okay and then over here it's your add patch so add patch shows you different patches from your animation section to audio device landmark and so forth so we want if you want this to be to rotate we need it animated so we will be using a loop animation loop animation creates a loop so it becomes a continuous continuous movement um, and you can see here it's like from one second uh, mirrored if you want to go the opposite direction um, and all that stuff um, the other patch we're going to need is the transition so if you can't really if you don't want to look at it on the if you don't look at it on the left hand side over here you can always search it but transition is also here and transition transition will be responsible in telling the loop animation what to um what to animate in terms of uh, rotating it to um or the position um but it's more the transition is more in charge of the y the x y z values so as you see over here there's three back if you click on transition there's three there's color uh, which actually i've been having used there's number i've used number because that's two one value and then you see vector two it has two values just the x and the y axis uh sorry then i have vector three so I wanted to go on the X, Y, and Z axis. For me, it makes it becomes easier like that. So if I ever wanted to go, um, if I ever want an object to rotate on the X axis, uh, or I don't like it, I can easily change to the Y axis or the Z axis. So I always normally use three. Uh, some effects don't work if you use three. So uh, just it's, it's all about experimenting, um, playing around, and doing, um, and finding out as much as you can. So. I'm going to make this zero, all of them zero, nice, and then since I want this to spin around, I'm going to be using the rotation of the blue light in the property panel. So these little arrows enable you to take that particular value and add it into the patch editor. Okay, so I press this, it gives me the blue rotation value you can see also there's three values so it makes sense there's x y and z so i pipe that value into the rotation the rotation of the blue light and you can see um let me just take it away again just notice that the light changed you know uh, changes position or oh, it's rotation actually changes rotation so if i add it again there it is you know kind of change so i'm going to use it on the Y axis. You can also notice on the face, I'm going to do it again. Notice the face over here. Notice the colors of the face. We're going to change after I add this. See? So that happens. Um, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to make it rotate left and right. So you can see two colors coming into one uh, continuously. So I want this on the Y axis. So I'm going to go 360 because I wanted to go 360 degrees. We are using degrees because we're speaking about rotation. So there you go. So you see it spinning. And as it's spinning, you can see how the face works as well. How it's received on the face mesh. But it's too fast for me. I don't like how fast it is, so I put it on 3 seconds. This is nice and slow. Yeah. 